Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use an NS text field, which is not just the label, but the actual text field where you can enter text. And also I'm going to be showing you how to use an NS date picker, which is basically a common way that you can pick a date. Go figure. So that's pretty much what this tutorial is going to be on, and also kind of a different way that you can create connections using Xcode 4. So that's what this tutorial is kind of going to be on. Um, what we have set up so far is just a simple brand new project. So I just went and created a new project in Xcode. So just a new Cocoa project like we did in the previous tutorials. Um, I've gone ahead and done all the basics. So I've gone and added a new class, which is the app controller class like we did in the last few tutorials. And I also added my app controller object to the workbench over here. And of course, I also define the class for this object to be of the app controller class. So uh, if you forget any of that stuff, it's all in the old tutorials. And I guess by now it's kind of, um, it'll just be a repetitive process. So hopefully if you don't know it by now, just go and figure it out. It's all in the old tutorials. So now onto the program. So what we want to do is we want a way for just the user to enter somebody's name can pick a date and then when they press a button um, a label will just update saying the name and the date essentially. So nothing really too special but just showing again the NS text field and the NS date picker. So um, what we want to do is go ahead and add a button. And these are at the top of the object library list so I don't really have to search for them. And I can just drag out any button type that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out this rounded textured button. And I'm just going to double click it and change the text to show me. And it doesn't really matter what you call it, I'm just calling it that for this tutorial. And now I want to add also an NS, uh, an NS text field, an NS date picker, and a label. So let's go ahead and search for the NS text field. And right here you can see we get this text field box. And what you want, and I didn't mean to double click that, but what you want is just to drag out the text field and drag it into our app. And then we can stretch it across just like so. Now what we want is also an NS date picker. So we can just type in date. And there you go, you get the top option to be date picker. And you can drag out the date picker right into your UI. And we'll just expand our text box here, our text field. And there you go, we have our NS text field, our NS date picker, and just our button. So the last thing on the list is just to add a label. So we'll type in label and here we go. We just drag out a label and that's all we really have to do. And of course we want to center this text like we did in the previous tutorial. So we're just going to go to our attributes and hit the center button. So there you go. Now what we have so far is pretty basic and I'm just going to zoom in a bit so you can see this. We have our label. We have our NS text field, and again, a label is an NS text field, in case you forgot. So that's, I guess, important to note. Um, so we have our NS text field, our NS date picker, and of course, our NS button. So now uh, that we've centered our label, there's probably a few other things that we'd like to do. So we also want to change the text on the label just to say, enter a name and date. And we also want to have, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this in some applications, but what's known as placeholder text, which is kind of just like grade text um, that shows up in a text box. And it kind of just gives you a prompt on what you should be entering in the text. So if you go on over to our attributes inspector and you've clicked on the NS text field, you can change the placeholder text to be whatever you want. So we're gonna set ours to be name. And now you can see over in our application, we have this grade text over here, and this just represents um, a placeholder text, which just kind of gives the user, um, you know, it heads up on what you probably should be entering in this text field. So here it says name, so that implies, of course, that you'd like to enter a name there. And of course, this label up here helps out too. So anyway, we have our entire user interface all set up, and now we have to make the connections. So um, we already have, like I said before, our app controller object set up. So that's all great. 
But now I'm going to show you a different way that you can make connections in Xcode 4. And whether you want to use it or not, it's up to you. But uh, it's just a new way in Xcode 4 that you can do this. So if you go on up to the editor menu up here, and you'll note if you want to press the middle one, this will bring up the assistant editor. And you'll notice when we zoom back out here that we essentially have this kind of dual editing mode of our interface, and then we also have a second editor. And um, by default, this editor is actually on the right side, but I find for Cocoa applications, it's better to have it on the bottom. So if you want to change this, you can go up to View, Navigate, nope, sorry, it's the Assistant layout, I never remember where these things are, and you can change it from Assistant Editors on the right to Assistant Editors on bottom. So it's pretty basic. And then it'll put your assistant editor down here. So now, of course, we want to make the connections between our code and our user interface. So we can do this uh, once we have our app controller object set up. And we are, as you can see, identifying the app controller class. And also, just as a side note, if you want to change the class that you're um, in basically, you can hit the jump bar right here and you can change the file that you want to have selected. So if I wanted to be, you know, tempering with the app delegate, then I could hit the app delegate, but I want to be in the app controller class, so I'm in app controller.h. So that's just um, a side note of what you can do. So now, how do we create new connections this way with this assistant editor? Well, it's kind of a neat way, and what you can do is literally control drag from your um, user interface down to your code. So let's identify what we need to have as variables or uh, different things that we need to tamper with or get the information from with our user interface. So of course, we want to be able to set the label on our user interface. So we want to be able to change that in code. So of course we want to have an outlet in code. We also want to be able to take the value from our NS text field. So we also want to have that in code as well. We also want to be able to set and get the date. So we also want to have a variable for our NS, uh, NS date picker. So uh, again, we don't want to, we don't need the button to actually be a um, IB outlet. So that's not going to actually have an outlet. So how do we do this? Well, now we can just control click and we can drag any element down to our code. So I'm just going to control click this label and I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to drop it in. And now you can see we got this little pop up down here. And basically it just asks you what kind of connections you want to make for um, what you just dragged down here. So as you can see, I'm messing with the app controller object and you need to have this app controller object on the bench for this to work. So just as a side note, but what we wanted to add here is the label. So all I have to type in is label, hit return, and now you can see that it's just entered the IB outlet of our label with an S text field as the type. So it's done everything properly, which is pretty nice. So now we also want to add our uh, other NS text field, which is the text field that's going to, uh, we're going to be able to enter our name with. So now, let me zoom in down here again, and I want to call this a name field. And again, just hit return, and now you have an NS, two NS text fields. One's a label, one's a name field. And we also want to add our date picker. So let's go ahead and drag this down here. And if we zoom in, you can also see that the type changes as well, so that's nice. And our name for this is just going to be date field. And we hit return with that. For whatever reason, it didn't let me go in like this. But anyway, that's um, basically all of our IB outlets. So we have an outlet for our label, we have an outlet for our text field, and we have an outlet for our date field. Or you could call it date picker if you want. It doesn't really matter. So now we can also even add IB actions. So if I want to add an action for the button, I can even drag the button down to the code and make sure it's down beneath the um, where we declare all the variables. And once I'm down here, I can zoom in. And you'll also notice that it still says the connection is an outlet. But I don't want to make an outlet, I want to be making an action. So if I change this from outlet to action, now I can have an action or a method for the button instead of an outlet. So now the name is asking for the name of the method, and this is just going to be called show me. And I hit return, and as you can see, it enters the IB action show me. 
So there we go. It's just a, a different way of setting up your classes uh, by control dragging from your UI into your assistant editor, which is our app controller object. So that's uh, just as a side note what you can do um, in Xcode 4 to add new, um, new outlets and IB actions. So that's nice, and that's just a feature that I want to show you. So now let's actually go into the code window, and let's see what we got. So we already, as you can see, we already have all these things set up, because we just set those up. And now we want to mess with the code, and uh, we want to actually change the things that we see on screen. So with this said, uh, we have our show me method right here that we created by uh, control dragging from our UI into our app controller when we had the assistant editor turned on earlier. So um, by default, when we dragged that show me method down into here, it also created it in the implementation file, which is kind of nice. So um, let's just think of a few things that we want to do here. So we actually want to initialize a value um, out of all these different things, and the value we want to initialize is this date. So we want to set the date to just be the current date. So we're going to do that, of course, in awake from nib because that's where we do our initialization work. So we can go into our app controller.m and let's create awake from nib. And now all we want to do is set up our date picker. So it's we called it date field. Probably should have called it date picker, but whatever. And the method that we want to use is set date value. And you'll notice um, they kind of always go with a very similar naming scheme for all these. So our date picker has set date value, and you'll notice that NS uh, text fields have set string value. So they have very similar naming conventions, just as a side note. So we want to set up our date field to be uh, equal to the current date. And we can do this, uh, and if you didn't notice earlier when I was setting this up, uh, NS date value takes an NS date as an object. So we want to have, of course, an NS date object, and what we do for this is we just say, or we call the date method, which just returns the current date. So all we're doing here is setting our date value for our date field to be equal to the current date. That's all we're doing in awake from nib. So now our show me, what we want to do is set up the label that we had at the top. So when we press the button, it will update with the name that we have and also the current date. So to do this, we're going to create first an NS string, just so that we can set up the string that we want to set as our label. And to do this, we're just going to create a new NS string. And we're going to say string with format. And string with format is basically, like I said before, it's going to have the name value that's inside our um, name field. And it's also going to have the current date, which is in our date field. So, of course, we need an uh, object. And we do that with percent at. And we're just going to kind of set up uh, what we're going to say here. So we're going to have our name uh, was here at. And then our other object is going to be our date. So the first object here is going to be our uh, person's name, and the next one is going to be the date. So now let's figure out how we're going to get the variable, or the values for these different objects. So again, if we want to take the name uh, that we enter, we want to get the string value of our name field because that's our uh, where the user enters the name. So we just say name field, and we just say string value. And string value uh, goes for any of these objects that you can enter a string. Usually, it's going to be string value to get like I said, the string value. Kind, kind of common sense, I guess. So now we have our uh, second object that we want to have here. So, so far we'd have the name, whoever our person is, was here at, and then we want to have whatever our date field value is. So, of course, for this, we want to have date field. And like I said, the naming conventions are very similar, so if this is string value, you can probably get guess that this is going to be date value. And if you guess that, you would be right. So there we go. So now we have our NS string, and we're using string with format. It's going to get the value of our name field, whatever its string value is. And then it's going to say person's name was here at, and then we're going to get the date value, which is just the date that we have in our date field, or our NS date picker. 
So now we want to set our label to be equal to the string because all we did here was just create a new NS string, but we actually haven't changed our label yet, which of course we want to do. So we can say label set string value, and set string value is just going to take our string object like we have there, and now we should be set to go. So our label is setting the string object that we created up here, which just has our name and the current date. And of course, awake from nib uh, sets up our date picker to be equal to the current date. So now that's uh, basically all we set up for this. And now let's see if it works. So let's go ahead and run this. And when it runs, you'll see it says enter a name and date. And um, it's kind of, uh, you can see right there that the placeholder text for name does show up. So it was just because when you select it, it goes away. And you can see that the date is also current, which is 4-6-2011. So the date picker was initialized properly in our awake from nib. And we can also change the date if we want. So let's change it to 2010. Let's change it to March. Let's change it to 24. And you can also notice that you can set these values as well. As you're going along so you can use the keyboard to set different values that's just a side note of the date picker and let's enter a name just say Lucas in there and let's hit the show me button and there you go Lucas was here at and you'll notice that it does this very odd formatting of NS date that's just because NS date takes the entire accuracy that it can get of a date and then it throws it in there is a way to format this, but that's for another tutorial because I'm not going to go into how to format dates because it's kind of confusing. So anyway, as you can see though, we get the general idea. It said uh, our name was here at, and then it puts in our date object that was in our date picker. And as you can see, it says 3-24-2010. So anyway, that's um, pretty much all I want to show you for this tutorial. Just showing you how to use NS text fields with NS date pickers. And yeah, so that's pretty much um, what you learned in this tutorial and also just the different ways of making connections, not just typing IB outlet and code, but you can also drag from your UI into your, um, your new classes. So um, that's again, an Xcode 4 feature just as a side note. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and many more are on the way. Um, you probably have also noticed that I've set up ads for um, my tutorials as well. And uh, if you're feeling um, nice at all any time during the day when you're watching these tutorials and one of the ads, you know, you just seem to notice it and um, are interested in what it has to advertise, then if you'd be so nice to click on the ads uh, here and again, I'm not asking you to click on them all the time, but, you know, if you're interested in them at all, then, I, uh, you know, it'd be nice if you do click on them. That's just as a side note, um, I mean, I've done 80 tutorials by now, so it's just a little bit of payback, I guess, for doing all these tutorials for you guys. So, um, anyway, I hope you're enjoying the tutorials, and um, more Coco tutorials are on the way, and if you want uh, video updates, you can also subscribe on Twitter at AppleProg. So anyway, I'll see you next tutorial.